Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this second part of the video, we will be covering most of Toto Island and making our way to the summit. We will be returning via a different route, enjoying the beach shore and catching a glimpse of the famous lighthouse along the way. It is a scenic path that offers a variety of landscapes to explore on our way back. Stay tuned as we explore the island's unique landscapes and breathtaking views. It is going to be a long five to six hour hike and we've fueled ourselves with snacks and drinks since nothing is available on the island due to biosecurity measures. These precautions help protect the island's unique environment. Just look around at this lava pathway and now catch a glimpse of Auckland from the island it's simply mesmerizing. The skyline set against the vast ocean creates a breathtaking view that's hard to beat. The contrast of rugged lava fields with the distant city is truly unique. Rangitoto Island, emerging just 700 years ago, is the youngest volcano in New Zealand and is pest-free, making it a unique natural sanctuary. An Auckland icon with a rich history, Rangitoto Island has long been a favourite day trip for walkers and a much-loved destination for boating enthusiasts. Its scenic trails and volcanic landscapes make it a must-visit spot. Rangitoto is the youngest and largest of Auckland's 48 dormant volcanic cones and is home to the world's largest Pahutukawa forest. Its expansive landscapes and unique ecology make it a remarkable destination for nature lovers. For a more adventurous option, one can kayak to Rangitota Island with a guided tour, which includes an hour-long trek to the summit for exploration. It's a thrilling way to experience the island's stunning landscapes while adding an active twist to your visit. One can choose to take the guided tour option on a 4WD road train or walk up to the summit on foot, which takes about an hour each way. Along the way, you can explore the fascinating black lava caves. Be sure to bring a torch to light the way, especially if you have kids with you.
There weren't many hikers this time, we only encountered a handful on the way up. Reaching the summit can be a bit challenging if you're not a regular hiker, as the path has many elevated sections. We came across a house-like structure but couldn't find its door pretty strange. It added a bit of mystery to our hike, leaving us curious about its purpose or history. We almost got exhausted since it was quite humid that day and it even rained for a while. Thank goodness we were prepared. We were constantly amazed at how well the conservation department has preserved this place. Look at this massive rim crater. It's an impressive sight, showcasing the volcanic activity that formed Rangitoto Island. The efforts to maintain the natural environment and unique landscapes of Rangitoto Island really stand out, showcasing their commitment to conservation and sustainability. Finally, we reached the summit of Rangitoto Island. The view from the top is absolutely breathtaking, offering panoramic vistas of the surrounding islands and Auckland's skyline. An old World War bunker used by soldiers stands as a historical reminder of the island's wartime significance. Its presence adds to the island's unique character. Most people at the summit had brought their food and drinks, enjoying a relaxing pit stop while taking in the stunning views. It's a rewarding culmination of our hike, showcasing the island's stunning natural beauty.
After spending some quality time at the summit, we decided to walk down towards the lighthouse. It was exciting to head towards another iconic spot on the island. On the way, we found another old bunker that was used during previous world wars. It started to drizzle again, adding a touch of adventure to our descent. Luckily, we were prepared with our gear, making it manageable as we continued towards the lighthouse. Look at this massive landscape, it's huge. The expansive views of Rangitoto Island and the surrounding waters are truly breathtaking. It's amazing to see how the volcanic terrain stretches out in every direction. There were several times we got lost and became confused about our route. The trails can be tricky, but with a bit of patience and a good map, we managed to find our way. It felt like we were in a tropical forest with the lush greenery and vibrant flora surrounding us. The dense trees and unique ecosystem really added to the island's charm. Since we were short on time and wanted to catch the last ferry, we couldn't visit the other island parallel to Rangitoto. It's definitely on our list for a future trip. We got confused again due to wrong signage and misinformation on the trails. Thank goodness we found a Canadian couple who were aware of the route. They were heading towards the lighthouse and then to catch the last ferry. We had a really nice conversation during our walk, which made the hike even more enjoyable. We talked about Canadian and Indian cultures, their economies and geopolitics. It was a brief but interesting exchange during our walk to the lighthouse. The beach was quite rough and in its natural state, not commercially maintained. Its untouched beauty added to the wild, 
authentic feel of the island, making it a unique experience. From here we can see Auckland in the distance it looks so tiny, almost like a concrete jungle compared to the vast, untouched nature surrounding us on the island. The contrast is striking. On this route, we couldn't find a single bench to rest on which was disappointing. After a long hike, having a spot to sit would have made a big difference. We passed an old house from the war, and it felt hauntingly abandoned. The eerie atmosphere added a mysterious touch to our walk. It was a chilling reminder of the island's history. By this time we were almost exhausted with the sun overhead and we had nearly run out of the food and drinks we brought to the island. The conservation department has some houses on the island that are used as overnight accommodations. However, one need to book in advance and get permission from them to stay there. Now we wanted to rush back to catch the ferry and relax. After a long day of hiking, a little downtime on the ride back sounded perfect. Finally, we could see our last ferry approaching, which meant we made it back just in time. Yes, 